All right, we got a trade. Knicks apparently have no interest in picking in the first round. They had two picks coming in. They're at 19, traded out to the fighting Michael Jordans, who took Kai Jones. And now at 21, a pick they got from Dallas. That's traded to the Clippers. There you go. And Keon Johnson, who has been the, like, best available, if you will, for a while now, finally goes, volunteers, SEC All-Freshman team. He ends up in L.A. to the Clippers. So, uh, Knicks, Clippers, make a deal. Knicks, get out of that one as well. I'm going to go to Matt Norlander first on this. Um, Keon Johnson, why do you think it, I mean, are you considering that he has fallen tonight? And if so, what, what would you attribute that to? I don't consider Keon Johnson to be someone who has fallen. Now, I, let's take a step back here and, and, and examine what's happening. I actually, this is refreshing. What we actually have here a bit is teams making draft picks of certain players who, if you peruse three, five, seven different mock drafts, it seems like teams are not letting the tail wag the dog, so to speak. Uh, Keon Johnson is certainly a bit of a zag on where he was expected to go. I think this is about right for him overall. Um, he interviewed well, from what I'm told, with multiple different franchises. The Clippers, by the way, kind of an inside baseball thing, the Clippers loved more players in this draft than I think any other franchise, or maybe all other franchises combined. I was going to be curious to see if they were going to move up and if they did who they go after fantastic athlete he was just okay at Tennessee quality player frankly didn't live up to expectation of what they thought he would be and that really was reflected upon the, the team overall but uh, it's a good pick and to be frank this is about the range that both I expected him to go in and frank what he probably deserves to go in okay so the Clippers move up to get him Knicks go down a few spots they're gonna go to 25 so they basically swap picks is this a guy that you would have traded up to get if you were looking at, you know, hey, 21 is there? I mean, this is a guy that we had a best available when we did this, I don't know, 45 minutes ago. He was in our best available sheet. Still there. I see what Matt's saying. He said, look, I don't think he's falling. This is, I mean, we've got about a range, and he's in the range, even if it's the lower end of the range. You say what? I, I totally agree. I think, you know, Keon's in the range. And when you look at the Clippers, you got to think about something. Kawhi Leonard just had ACL surgery. So we don't know what his availability is going to be for the rest of this year. Uh, very well could start the season, uh, and he might not be available until the second half uh, or the end of the NBA season starting on next year. So, again, you got to draft players that you think can come in and play. This kid was very well coached by Rick Barnes at Tennessee. Uh, another kid that you can move around a little bit. How does he compliment Paul George? That's what this is about. But when you have a player, your best player, like Kawhi Leonard, that's injured, you got to look at players that can come in and play. And this is why you try to move up because you identify somebody that you think could be a steal. But I think I agree with my buddy Matt. This is about the range for Keon Johnson. All right, Eric Bossy, uh, do you like the team that traded up to get? Keon Johnson, a team that traded out and got value and said, eh, we can find someone like this four or five picks from now. Yeah, I think I think there's a point, a case to be made for both of them. Um, and Keon, it's an interesting pick because, yes, he had a little bit of a underwhelming, maybe, if you want to call it that, freshman season. But I think people need to factor in that he's a kid that was a late bloomer in high school, didn't really bust onto the scene nationally until his junior year, um, the summer heading into his senior season played smaller school, private school in Tennessee, and then he he had a knee injury his senior year and missed his entire senior year. So we're talking about an already young guy, a one-and-done guy, who's even younger than the typical young guy. Um, I think that we need to factor in the, the steep learning curve that this kid's had to adjust to in a COVID year without having a summer in the weight room and in, in practices with Tennessee coming off of a, a season-ending injury as, as a senior. Um, he's a freaky athlete. I would rate him as, if not the best potential perimeter defender in the draft, certainly one of the top three or four. So there's a lot of value here. And also at the same time, you know, if you're trading out of this as New York, you know, maybe you don't have time for that. Maybe you're eventually trying to take some of these draft picks and trade for a little more ready-made player. But in Keon, with what they've been doing developmentally-wise, I think in Los Angeles, you got to look at what they've done with someone like Terrence Mann. And I think they find a guy who can be not only similar to him, but perhaps even a little bit better when it's all said and done. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.